What's up guys, welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. Today we're going to be finishing our full set review of Avengers War of the Realms with the chases. If you guys missed the other ones, make sure to go back and check those out. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So starting us off strong, we have number 57, Black Widow. At 75 points, she's got uh, Avengers team ability, 5 range triple target, 9 movement with running shot, 12 attack, 18 impervious, and 3 damage with a close combat expert. She's also got improved targeting for adjacency and a special attack power that says energy explosion and penetrating psychic blast. So that means she's going to be a big threat either up close or at range because up close she's going to have a 13 attack, 4 damage thanks to that close combat expert. And at range, penetrating blast or energy explosion, which could also combo with the penetrating blast to make the whole thing penetrating with triple target is pretty nuts. Um, now she also has this interesting trait that says at the beginning of your turn you may roll a d6 and give Black Widow a number of summon tokens equal to the result free. Remove six summon tokens to generate a lurker bystander max one. So I feel like on average you'd probably be able to do that like every other turn. Uh, and now the lurker bystander here it's got Mystic's team ability which is pretty interesting. It's got 8 movement with flurry, 10 attack, 3 damage, and a 17 with invulnerability. And a trait that says if an opposing character has been KO'd since your last turn, modify attack plus 2. If a friendly character has been KO'd since your last turn, modify attack minus 2. So this thing could have a huge follow-up attack if you happen to just KO an opposing character um, with a 12 attack flurry. It's pretty nuts. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And the fact that you just take a free action to remove the, the summon tokens to generate him is pretty great because that means you can basically generate him whenever you want him. So you can wait until you get that KO and then you could like move her into position, free, drop him, get that 12 attack flurry off. That's pretty great. I think for 75 points she's pretty awesome. Um, now she does have a 50 point line where she starts uh, with a 10 attack and 17 impervious, and she just has four clicks of life there, which isn't bad. I mean, you still get that potential to generate the lurker. You still got, you know, penetrating energy explosion and the close combat expert. So she's still pretty decent for 50 points, but I think I just like her better for the full on 75 uh, for that, like three more clicks of health and the 12 attack and everything. So yeah, all in all though, she's pretty awesome. But moving on next, we have the Human Torch. Now, this one we saw in the Scott Porter unboxings. This is an amazing sculpt, by the way, on this Human Torch with the whole, like, you know, eternal flame cup thing, or goblet, whatever you want to call it, and he's just, like, coming out of there. Super epic. Now, he's coming in at 100 points, at full points. Um, he's got Mystic's team ability and Fantastic Four team abilities. 7 range double target, 11 movement running shot and flight, 12 attack, 18 energy shield, 4 damage with probability control. Great stats and powers right there. He's got improved movement and targeting to destroy blocking terrain. Uh, trait, the Eternal Flame of Destruction. Human Torch deals penetrating damage. So that's just all the time from any source. He's going to deal penetrating damage. And then free, choose a debris marker within range. Opposing characters occupying or adjacent to the marker are dealt one damage. And what's great about that is, you know, you can shoot, destroy blocking, or just straight up move through blocking and generate those, um, you know, debris markers, and then just take a free action to deal one damage. And that's going to be penetrating because he always deals penetrating damage. So even that will be penetrating damage. And then he also has a special attack power, poison, but deals damage even if moved or placed this turn. You gotta love that. You can literally just move this guy up, break down a wall or something, uh, free, do the poison that's gonna be penetrating, and then take the free to do a penetrating for everything adjacent to the marker, the uh, debris marker. So that's just a ton of free damage. Anytime you can do anything like that, it's great. And that's not even talking about just the fact that he has good stats and powers to be an actual like attacker or something, you know? Uh, now for 50 points, I don't like him quite as much. He starts with sidestep, energy explosion, toughness, and enhancement. Uh, he still has, you know, the eternal flame thing, which is nice. I feel like you're going to be using that a lot more. I wish he started with the poison uh, as well here, but he has to click into that. Uh, I don't know. He's okay. He's not horrible for 50 points. You can still move up or even just sidestep, break a wall, free, do the penetrating from the debris marker, and then attack. 
Um, so, I mean, there's still a lot of things he can do. And the Mystics also, if they hit him, they're going to take Penetrating. So, I don't know. All in all, I just love this Human Torch for just all that free damage. He reminds me a lot of the Starter Set one from the Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash Starter Set that did the free... Uh, anything he moved through, he could do one penetrating damage to something he moved through, and then he also had a poison that he could use after being moved. So basically just a really good upgraded version of that, and that one was already awesome. But moving on next, we have Doctor Strange. 75 points, Defenders and Mystics team ability, 8 range double target, 10 movement stealth and flight, 12 attack, penetrating blast, 18 super senses, 2 damage, uh, improved targeting for hindering and characters is nice. And he's got a trait that gives him mind control, and when he uses it as range, modify attack plus two. That's actually pretty nuts. He's going to have a 14 attack mind control. And then he's got outwit and prob there on his damage power. So honestly, 75 points is not bad for what he can do. 8 range double target, 14 attack mind control is obviously great. Now if he comboed that with running shot instead of stealth, it'd be really good. Uh, I feel like the stealth kind of brings him down a little. I mean, it's nice, but like, I don't know. You just kind of have to sit there and uh, wait for them to get close enough to mind control. Uh, at Wit and Prob, though, is really good. So he's kind of, you know, a bit of a, a support character, but he also can do a lot with the mind control. And you can always Penetrating Blast. He's got Penetrating Blast the whole dial. I wish he started with the 3 damage, though, so he could actually do some damage if he needed to. I don't know. He's not horrible, but he's probably my least favorite of the chases overall. And I mean, even the worst of chases is usually better than your average figure, so he's okay. Up next is number 60, Rocket Raccoon. Probably one of the better chases now. Only 50 points, he's got 7 range triple target. Uh, Guardian's team ability, so they can't mess with his stats. He's got 8 movement running shot, 12 attack. 18 with super senses and 3 damage. Then he also has a trait that gives him plasticity and opposing characters within 4 squares on line of fire consider Rocket Raccoon adjacent for movement purposes. So, I mean, being able to tie up people from 4 squares away is really good. And then he also has a special attack power that gives him energy explosion and when Rocket Raccoon uses it after resolutions, give each hit character an action token. So, I mean, 7 range, triple target, 12 attack, energy explosion that also gives everybody an action token that it hits. I mean, that's pretty nuts for only 50 points by itself. Combo in the plasticity within four squares thing, and uh, he's already very good. And then, that's not all, he also has a damage power that gives him outwit, and once per turn for all characters with this effect, when Rocket Raccoon uses outwit, after resolutions, it deal the target character one damage if it has one or more action tokens. So if he energy explosions a whole group of people, then he can also outwit. And if they have an action token from his energy explosion or just being moved or whatever, then he's going to also deal one damage from just free using the outwit. That's so good in my opinion. Probably the best thing about him just being able to do free damage is always good. I mean, that's what I was just loving about the Human Torch a minute ago, was all the free damage he could do without having to make any attack rolls. Um, in his case, it's penetrating, but for this Rocket Raccoon, it's just normal one damage, but uh, as long as you... I mean, you could always just outwit their defense power, and then boom, free damage, right? So, very good. Very, very good Rocket Raccoon, in my opinion. One of the best chases in the whole set, I think, because of all that amazing stuff he can do. Moving on next, however, we have number 61, Venom. 75 points, uh, pretty average looking Venom dial. Well, average from what I would like to see in a Venom more often. 10 movement charge, 11 attack blades, 18 invulnerable, and 3 damage with exploit weakness. And uh, then later on he gets some flurry and some uh, steel energy, and then he gets some regular shape change because they no longer give it to them traded now, uh, but he does have improved movement elevated and the new symbiotic fusion trait gives him plasticity and super senses. And Venom can't be targeted by ranged attacks if he's within four squares in line of fire of an opposing character. Um, so we saw that on all the Venoms in Empire. They're giving it to this one, which is great because that's such a good trait to have. Um, you'd be surprised how often that comes up. Once you get him you know, in there, uh, they have to fight him up close because once he's within four in line of fire of any opposing character, nobody can shoot at him. Even if they, you know, can see through all the everything, all the terrain, and they have like a 12 range, 
it doesn't matter, they can't target him. Uh, so that's just really, really useful. And, you know, Super Sense's Shape Change in Vuln on the last half with some Flurry Steel Energy definitely gives him some survivability. Uh, and, you know, Charge Blade's exploit, of course, gives him some damage potential up top. And then he also has Power Generate a Dreamstone Simulacrum Bystander. Max 1, if Venom hit an opposing character this turn, this trait is activated as free instead. And taking a look at the uh, Dreamstone thing, 10 movement charge, 11 blades, 18 invulnerability, and 3 damage exploit. So it's literally his top click. At Him at top click is the exact same thing you get for this uh, bystander, which is great. I mean, you literally could just charge in there, hopefully hit with blades exploit, and then if free, generate that bystander to either charge on somebody else or hit the same person again, giving you kind of like a flurry thing. Uh, but you also have that, you know, bystander to kind of block line of fire. Um, or, you know, he, if he's within foreign line of fire of an opposing character, he can't be shot at anyway. So there's just a lot of really cool things he can do. He's also got double target. I don't think I mentioned that. So he can potentially swing on two characters to give you better odds of hitting. Um, so yeah, I mean, 75 points... As far as, like, Eddie Brock Venoms go, this is, like, the best one we've had, probably. Um, except for maybe the Prime from Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage. That one is really good, too. But this one is great. I like this one a lot. For only 75 points, definitely worth it. Moving on next, probably the most sought-after and one of the other best chases in the set, number 62, Spider-Man. Also coming in at 75 points. A lot of these chases seem like they're 75 points. Um, but anyway... Six range triple target is pretty nuts for a Spider-Man. Uh, he's got Spider-Man team ability, of course. He's got 10 movement charge, 11 attack, 18 combat reflexes, and 3 damage. Also a pretty great list of keywords as Guardian, Avengers, Future Past, Scientist, and Spider-Man Family. Improved movement elevated and a special trait that says Super Senses. When Spider-Man uses it, increase the result by plus 1 for each time the attack was re-rolled. So, of course... If they hit him, you just prob it. If they hit him again, well, now he's got a four through six super senses. If you can find somebody else to prob it on your team, uh, or maybe if they missed and they had to prob it themselves, then it's going to get ridiculous. He's going to have like a three through six super senses pretty easy. And if you have him copy the Wonder Woman team ability, he could easily have like a two through six super sense rolls, which is just nuts. Now this guy basically just needs some type of like protection from outwit, so they don't just straight up outwit the super senses. Um, and he'd be basically impossible to hit. Because besides that trait and having his own probability control on his damage power, that also gives him and adjacent friendly characters safeguard probability control, opposing probability control, that is. Um, in addition to all that, he has a special attack power that says when making an attack roll, Spider-Man may roll three dice instead of two. And then, after any re-rolls or die replacements, choose one die to ignore. And when Spider-Man is attacked, you may choose the opposing character rolls three dice instead of two. Then, after any re-rolls and die replacements, choose one die to ignore. So, <laughs> you can basically just pick and choose what die, uh, what two dice they're going to roll out of three. And, I mean, that just gives you much better odds of hitting and being missed by attacks. Now, if your opponent wastes a few probability control rolls on that, and they do still end up hitting, you know, you're going to have ridiculously high chances of hitting your super senses. So, it's just going to be... it's just not good. You really need, like, three outwits on this guy. You need to outwit this special attack power. You need to outwit his prob control. You need to outwit his super senses. And then he'll still have 18 with combat reflexes, which is not exactly easy to hit, especially because he's going to be most likely close combat up in your face with, you know, charging in and everything. So crazy, crazy hard to hit this Spider-Man. Um, one other big problem, though, besides just outwitting everything, poison is a thing. Uh, you could just poison him. He has no reducers, no toughness or anything. So this is one reason I feel like Hulk from this set could be huge because you can just give this guy toughness, and then you can't just poison him to death with, like, you know, maggots, or uh, maybe with the Human Torch we just looked at, or even the uh, the Rocket Raccoon we just looked at. Um, you can't just get free damage in on him that way if he's got some type of reducer. Um, Hulk may not be the best thing. You know, maybe give him um, the Stones, Merlin... Stones of Merlin, Gems of Merlin, whatever they're called. It gives him Invincible, anyway. Um, or the Wonder Woman armor to give him flight and invulnerability. 
Um, so he definitely needs a reducer so they don't just poison him. But yeah, I could see this guy on a team with a Wonder Woman to, to copy the team ability and giving him uh, some type of reducer either from equipment or from somebody else giving it to him. Um, and then, you know, also you could make him power cosmic with uh, like Galactus on the sideline so he just can't be outwitted with any of those things. Or if you can find some other way to give him protection from outwit, that'd be great too. But I feel like if you could give him a few of those things, this dude is just literally impossible to hit. And let's not forget here, it at least on here, it doesn't say that he's unique. So uh, yeah, you could literally play like two or three of this guy and then, uh, you know, play Hulk to give them all toughness. And then you can also play just the Wonder Woman bracelets, so one of them can equip it, and then the other two can just copy Wonder Woman team ability from that. And then you have a whole unhittable team of Spider-Mans. I don't know, that'd be ridiculous. Anyway, I love this figure. Probably my favorite Spider-Man of all time. Um, it really feels like a Spider-Man, too. Like, I know he has special time powers in this uh, iteration, but it really just feels like what I want a Spider-Man to do. Like, my ideal perfect Spider-Man. Seems so cool. So I love it. 10 out of 10 figure easily. But we got to move on. So moving on next, we've got She-Hulk. She-Hulk is great too. 100 points. Her dial looks very similar to um, the Prime Destroyer, being that it's just nine straight clicks of Impervious and Close Combat Expert. Uh, but she also has Charge and Super Strength the whole time as well. She also has Improved Movement, destroys Blocking Terrain, and she's got a very interesting trait that gives her free, choose one, Telekinesis as free, but only to target an adjacent friendly character, uh, generate a heavy object, or this turn when She-Hulk uses an object action, increase the damage dealt by one, or heal She-Hulk two clicks. So you got four really good options there. Um, free TK on an adjacent friendly character is really cool. Literally just throw somebody, you know, fastball special them at someone. Uh, that could be great. A free TK is always good, honestly. Uh, but I also really like the fact that you could, like, turn one, generate a heavy object. Turn two, choose that she does plus one damage with object attacks. So, that way when she charges in there, she's gonna be hitting for seven damage. So when you count the fact that she has Close Combat Expert, she's going to be charging in with a 13 attack, 5 damage to start. If she has a heavy object, or any object really, because they all do plus 1, she's going to be able to hit for 6 damage with a 13 attack. Then you can also use her trait here that says when she uses an object action, increase the damage dealt by 1. I mean, she could easily be hitting for 7. Now the interesting thing about that that I'm just realizing as I read it again, you're increasing the damage dealt by 1, not her damage value. So you could actually, if you had some way to like empower her or something else, she could be hitting for 8 because you could only plus 3 your damage, but increasing the damage dealt is not your damage value. So <laughs> she could hit for 8 if you set it up right. That's awesome. Uh, I hope we get a Hulk that's on this level soon because this is freaking great. And I mean, nine clicks long, full of impervious. She can take a free action to heal two clicks every turn if you have to. Gives her a lot of staying power. Um, so yeah, she hits hard. She can take a hit for sure. And this is, you know, probably the best She-Hulk we've ever gotten, even though she's enhanced by uh, Thor's magic belt of strength there. Uh, but still, really cool, really fun She-Hulk for sure. And last but not least, we have one of my personal favorite figures of the set, Iron Man. Uh, now, again, following the trend of all the other chases, this is probably the best Iron Man that we've had in a long, long time. Uh, 125 points, he's got 8 range double target, 10 movement running shot with flight, 12 attack energy explosion, 18 defense with that special defense power, and 4 damage with outwit. So he's got improved targeting hindering, which is great because he can outwit stealthy characters, and you know, they just don't get the plus 1 defense against his range attacks. Super good. Uh, his trait here gives him Iron Man and adjacent friendly characters can't be given action tokens by opposing effects. So that's not too crazy, but there are a lot of things like that Rocket Raccoon we saw earlier that gives everything an action token that he hits with Energy Explosion. Um, there, of course, is, you know, the Wonder Woman set has a lot of good incapacitate figures, like from the Wonder Woman lasso, just double incapping everything. So that definitely could come up against some really good figures, too. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind. It's not something that's going to come up a lot, but it could be useful. 
And then he has his special defense power here, which I absolutely love, is impervious. And Iron Man takes a maximum of one damage against range attacks and Blades, Claws, Fangs, protected outwit. Uh, very similar to what we saw earlier on Curse in the rares. So, but this is impervious instead of invulnerability, so that's a little bit better. You have that chance to roll out of all damage. Um, and yeah, taking a maximum of one damage from range attacks is really good. Uh, and Blades, Claws, Fangs, so they can't even hit him really hard with Blades up close. They have to rely on things like Exploit Weakness mainly is going to be the number one thing, because they can't outwit this, it's protected outwit. So, as long as you can stay at range and uh, stay away from Exploit Weakness, you're going to be good. Uh, and he's got outwit, so you can always just outwit their charge, outwit their exploit weakness, whatever. Plus his nice nine click long dial there gives him a lot of health to uh, stay alive, <laughs> you know. I mean, even if they do get up close and hit him one or two good times, he's still going to be around. Um, and it's also cool that he goes to some leadership and then some like poison and uh, charge and close combat expert. So he switches it up there, goes to a more close combat dial and the poison could really take some people by surprise. So, uh, yeah, I love this Iron Man. He's probably my favorite Iron Man yet. And he also has a 75 point line. He still gets running shot, energy explosion with 11 attack, and starts with the three damage with leadership. And I mean, he still has three clicks of that awesome defense power and three clicks of invuln. So I think for 75 points, he's still a really solid Iron Man. Uh, I think he'd be worth putting on the sideline for like an Avengers swap out team in case you happen to be going against like you know, a Wonder Woman lasso type of team or something, or the, uh, maybe a Malekith mission point team or something random like that. Just swap him in and be like, no, now you can't in-cap any of my, any of my guys. So, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, I love him a lot. He's probably my favorite Iron Man, 10 out of 10. So that's gonna do it for the chases. Thank you guys so much for watching this whole series. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. Let me know in the comments what your favorite chases are. I love all of them, honestly. They're some of the best chases we've had in a while, in my opinion. I think they're all really, really fun, really cool, really good versions of all the characters. Um, my least favorite one is Doctor Strange. She's just kind of boring, but still a pretty solid figure overall. But let me know all your thoughts and opinions about all that, as well as just the whole set, you know, as a whole. <laughs> I think it's a pretty fun set overall, but anyway, don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos, and if you'd like to help support the channel even more, check the links in the description for our Patreon so you can see your name here in the credits, as well as some other cool stuff, so check that out. And that's gonna do it for this one, so thank you guys again so much for watching, and until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off.